Thank you, Professor Chung. Now we'll have Professor Louis Chen and Professor Ronnie Shah, the chairman of the Business Studies Panel and the Social Humanities and Social Sciences Panel, to give us advice to the HSS applicants on applying collaborative research grants. Professor Chen and Professor Shah, please. Oh, it depends. <laughs> The humanities, okay. humanities and social sciences are underrepresented in these schemes. So as far as I know, there's only one AOE and two CRS in the humanities and social sciences. I would like to encourage you to apply, although I feel awkward because I am one of the people sitting, one of the 30 people sitting in the dark that Catherine O'Brien and James Wong refer to. And I was always glad that I was sitting in the dark and not in their shoes trying to give the presentation. I'm not sure I will ever apply for this, or nor that I would ever get it. But one thing I know for sure, all of those technical things that you've, you've heard from uh, Professor McBride and Professor Wong are absolutely necessary, but they're not sufficient. That is, every single presentation by the interview stage is already technically, should I say, perfect with the flowcharts, with the PowerPoint presentations. But what distinguishes, I think, a successful application from a non-successful one is something that uh, Professor Zhong Yiwa has just referred to. That is, a spark is somewhere along the way that those of us sitting in the dark between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. suddenly <laughs> wakes up to. That is an idea. And the idea has to come from a large question, and then let me say specifically for the humanities, a question that you want to answer about philosophy, about history, about literature, that in the old days, you say, it would take me 20 years to write this book, it would take me a lifetime to master all of the languages, master all of the disciplines, before I can write this book. Well, we are not living in those days, we don't have the time, we have to publish every year, every five years, every 10 years. But thanks to these schemes, if you have that idea, if you have to, that ambition, you do not have to wait until you are 75 before you publish your magnum opus. You apply for the CRS. But you have to be animated by an idea, and then you start to talk to collaborators. It will take years of preparation, and then you apply. All of you in the humanities can apply if you have this idea, because all of you have participated in conferences. Many of you have organized workshops, large-scale conferences, and some of the proposals have come in from people with ideas who write a proposal as if they were organizing an international conference. It is not going to work. There's only the first stage. You need to go beyond the conferences and to plan already the result that you want to have after you have already had the conference. In other words, you need to have the vision and you need to have the control. It is difficult, but it's rewarding because I think ultimately you will see that magnum opus within your own lifetime, maybe even within five or 10 years, and you don't have to wait until your retirement or until you kick the bucket for your students and for your family to discover your nachlas in your drawer and publish that grand work. Thank you. Uh, that's a hard act to follow. Um, let me begin by uh, reiterating Ronnie's point that uh, I would like to encourage everybody in humanities, social sciences, and business studies to apply for these large projects. We are currently underrepresented. How do we get there? Uh, again, I presume, I don't presume uh, to tell you how to achieve that. All I can do is uh, instill my experience as being one of those 30 people in a dark room listening to all these interviews and give you a list of uh, five things based on my experience. Uh, there are two don'ts and there are three do's. The first don't, and I cannot 
underemphasize this is it, don't forget the science. Uh, in, in business studies, we're applied social scientists. We like, we, are, we, like, we are used and indeed we are trained to think about identifying an interesting problem, devising novel, rigorous approaches to analyze a problem and then combine those approaches with the data to arrive at conclusions. So, so you should state why the issue is important, but don't forget the science. Now, at the level of a proposal or an interview, no one is expecting a fully fleshed analytical model to get to the question, but there should be enough evidence in both the proposal and the presentation that you have thought through the sort of analytical framework, you have identified ex ante all the issues involved, and you have a plan in place to get through and answer those questions. So please don't forget the science. My second don't is, re is related. We are so eager in motivating the problem that sometimes we tend to cherry pick the most dramatic, the starkest example to motivate why the question is interesting. But that, because precisely because that example is so far-fetched, that makes the audience think there is no way your approach can solve the problem or there's no way that your approach can relate to this problem. So in, in, in your zeal to convince people that this is an interesting problem, please don't oversell because that just sets the hurdle so far high up that people will start to think there's no way that this approach, this, this, this proposal can feasibly solve the problem. So that's my second dose. Let me become more positive and give the three do's. Following up on the presentations you have heard earlier today from Professor McBride, Professor Wang, please do show evidence of the expertise in your project team. Expertise in two dimensions. Expertise in terms of the depth of knowledge of the people in the project team as far as the issue is concerned, and also expertise in terms of the, the breadth of expertise, because all these large projects are all interdisciplinary, they cut across different areas, so make sure that every member of your team contributes in some way in terms of answering the question and achieving those objectives. The, s the second do is do please provide some, some plan for managing the tasks across the different research objectives. This is the best way, perhaps the only way, that the reviewers can assess whether there is genuine collaboration that sort of is drawn organically by trying to solve the problem and not some just tacked on group of people looking at the problem and trying to get funding. So please do show clear plan for achieving your tasks, setting milestones and coordinating objectives across the different tasks. My final do is please, <laughs> please do show that there is particularly if there is an applied component. Th it's important to get some, some buy-in from external constituencies. I think the most impressive projects, as Professor Wang has pointed out, are the ones where you have shown that you have consulted beforehand with external constituents, either industry groups or regulatory authorities, to convince them that this is an interesting problem and they can also chip in the necessary resources and the insights for you to help achieve your objectives. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.